Hello and welcome to Porting and Polishing Tips from CC Specialty Tools. Um, you can find all the products I use for this at ccspecialtytool.com uh, online or you can call us at 1-800-762-6995. Now, we've been showing you some of the tools and stuff that gets set up to do this. Now, Let's do the fun part. Let's get down to cutting. That's the part we all came here to see, right? The actual pouring, the actual cutting out. Now, some people get confused. They, um, they see people get little wire brushes and things like that and run them up in the ports and clear up some little burrs and stuff and call that porting. That's not porting. Um, porting is actually enlarging, shaping the ports so that better airflow and better velocity can be achieved and thus higher horsepower and uh, better performance. So. Let's get down to the fun part. Let's do some cutting. Now, granted, there are a lot of other things you can do to the cylinder head. Uh, the changing the valve seats, things to that nature. But that's not what we're doing this. This is mainly just about the cutting and the porting. So let's see what we can do. All right, so first, uh, there's a whole lot of ports here. And I have no interest in doing them all for you because they will bore the daylights out of you. And this is YouTube and uh, characteristically, Tension spans aren't really long here on YouTube. So let's pick out this port right here and let's get to work. Let's do a little bit of cut and see how to do it. So first thing I got here is my uh, carbide burr. Mounted up here on my uh, trusty 44 MC. Now, uh, this is a little bit different head shape than you'll see on some of it. It's still, a, uh, still an R, but it's a longer head. I like that. A lot of people prefer the classical our head shape and that's fine. I use it on my long shape burrs because it's easier to control when you're reaching up in there. But typically, just for me, between an R and a D head shape, I can get most stuff done. But for the short shape now, what I, what I recommend to people is the shortest shape that you can reach what you're doing with, the better because you have more control and precision. So anyway, let's uh, this is the carbide iron move. Let's get into cutting here. Now, you're going to see me do this kind of like a paintbrush. Take a layer. After layer. And the metal off. Now, the reason I won't do I do that, and I won't just use this thing like a carving knife. Very simple. Watch what happens if I just start cutting in here. Yeah. See that? I don't know if you can see it well, but that's a nice little divot. Now what that tends to do is, is exacerbate as I keep on going. I keep, people tend to keep having that divot there, or, they, or at least you have to spend extra time to work it down. And why do that? When you can just simply, you know, I'll erase it out. Because I've uh, made that mistake before. You can make it no way, but it's, it's, there's no use to do it. These aren't carving knives. Now, especially when you get down to, uh, we'll cover this on the two strokes, when you get down to using like a right angle, these little eighth inch shank burrs, or even the longer shank eighth inch uh, with a straight hand piece, you want to use these things like a paintbrush, like you're brushing away the metal. Not like a carving knife or a chainsaw, where you're just gouging this stuff out of here. That doesn't, sure you can do it, but that doesn't work good. Uh, and it has some problems if you get into it. You can sit, now it won't do it as bad on these quarter inch shanks, uh, but you can start to bend that shank and the uh, burr can get off center. But I guarantee you when you get down on these eighth inch burrs like this, you can bend those pretty easy. And you can even bend the longer shank quarter inch ones, the uh, four and six inch ones. No need to do that. You're not in a hurry. You got time. Take your time and get it done right. So let's just keep going here. And you know if I stay to myself with the other hand. You also notice I vary my angle. That helps with the cutting. You'll uh, by changing that angle a little bit of uh, attack, you can start to get better cuts here. Uh, also, listen to the RPMs of the tool. I'm usually cutting right about here. I'm not way up blasting it. Balls out, which is actually a reference to the steam engine, but anyway, not all the way up, balls out on a, a maximum RPM or anything. That's why I like these uh, flat shaft tool systems. 
because they give you that strength, that torque, and a low RPM to let you make these precise cuts instead of having to hit the RPM. Or the other thing that some people I know have done with new bags is they get these little step down tools that go between the hose and here to uh, step it down, which is fine, you can do that, but it's just sort of cumbersome. It's easy just to swap to a flex shaft system. Now, I will keep going after this until I erase all the glue. Layer by layer. Who knows a handy thing about this cylinder brace that I showed you in some other video. I got my other hand to steady this one. It makes it easier. Just go like this. And now as I'm doing this, I know this is extraordinarily boring. So uh, let's cut to the chase on some of this. Let's take out this little layer down here that has to come out. And I can show you the next thing that I want to pull out. And I realize that y'all may not like, be able to still see the blue from the angle of the light, but whatever. Um, what I'm trying to show you here is, see how I cut this out down to the line here? Okay, now that creates a little step back into the support. You don't lose that. You work this back, first with your short shank, I can work that back down into a straight plane because you don't want a sudden angle change from where this edge is to into the port. That's detrimental. That doesn't help you. If you make a big step here or here or here or wherever you're cutting at, that doesn't help you. You don't want to just cut the opening to the lines you make. You want to cut it, blend it, blend it again, then blend it one more time. Now once we uh, get back into it, like I said, we're going to get back into these other angles that uh, are hard to see with these longer shank burrs. And uh, once we go over that, we're going to start going into our braces. Now, the uh, types that we use, or I tend to use, are these little sanding drums. You can call them cartridge drills, spiral rolls, uh, sandpaper rolls, whatever. They're all these little things. They're little abrasive rolls on a spiral mandrel like this. There's long and short shank spiral mandrels like this. And you can also use, for smoothing and blending certain areas, you can use these little uh, cross buffs. They work great for smoothing and blending in those areas. Uh, I'll do these in increments and steps. Uh, another tool that you can use is a slotted mandrel with a little bit of emery cloth like this. Now, this is just basically a slotted piece of metal with, uh, with sandpaper. Uh, you just take and you slide it right in the little slot and roll it up and there you go. Now, what's nice about this is they'll kind of flap out once in there and help you uh, work to the different areas. And I'll use these different abrasives to work it back to what I wanted to do. Also, in the corners and edges, I'm just going to mount up on that same little straight thing, these little eighth inch bursts. They help you get these slight little corners and get things to precise. Now again, it's very important with these that you use them like a paintbrush, not like a carving knife or you'll bend them and they'll come off center in your room. And there's no reason to do that. Uh, the reason you have to, or I always keep the eighth inch bursts around, is because you can see a different radius. So it's hard to get in certain spots, get this little radius here to look right because you can't make a cut any smaller the external radius of that. So even when you get out here to the tip, it's not going to be as precise as the smaller cutting radius of this. So that's, uh, that's why I like to have them. And uh, anything I use in a right angle, of course, most right angles are going to use eighth inch burrs anyway. So I uh, hope that kind of tells you a little bit more about what I'm going to be doing. I'm not going to bore you by showing you every little step. I'll uh, try to try to show you the final results and give you a little bit better idea of what you're trying to shoot for. Uh, you can see some of the other videos online here and learn a lot more about other steps as well. Uh, so like I said, this is uh, TJ from CC Specialty Tools. You can find all the products you see uh, me using at ccspecialtytools.com or call us at 1-800-762-6995.